Good evening. Welcome to PS. This is The Last of Us, a show where we discuss the HBO series The Last of Us. Each week we'll be giving our opinions, criticisms, having discussions each episode in this series. And we'll also be discussing the PlayStation Award winning game of the same title, weighing them against one another. This show will be available each Monday night on our YouTube channel and we'll be spoiling the game in these conversations. So we're going to be having conversations with the understanding that you, the viewer or listener, have watched this episode that we're about to talk about. Now, for those just stopping by, my name is Fred Oakman, and this here with me tonight is Jake Peters. We also host a weekly PlayStation podcast titled P.S. This is Awesome, a PlayStation podcast, and we've been going strong for many, many years. So if you're interested in weekly PlayStation discussions or interested in viewing more content like this here video, just subscribe to this channel and we'll do the rest of the heavy lifting lastly we have a patreon for our playstation podcast so if you like what we're doing here or over there for one dollar a month we'll give you a shout out on the show and mail you a free die cut vinyl sticker in the mail and you can find that at patreon.com slash ps this is awesome your dollar every month goes a very long ways in helping us sustain the cost of doing the show today we're obviously having a conversation about season one episode four which was titled please hold my hand I don't know where they come up with some of these uh, titles. I know last episode's title was based off of the Linda Ronstadt song. And uh, the infected one clearly makes sense because, you know, Tess was bitten or she was infected. But please hold my hand. Do they say this in this episode? I didn't catch it if they did. I didn't hear it anywhere. Yeah. I think it's maybe, maybe sort of the tone of the episode since... It kind of seems to have a lot to do with Joel kind of exposing Ellie to some of this new world of violence. Yeah, I think you're right. And Jake, double check and make sure the right mic is coming through on your setting because it does sound a little roomy. Um, Jake and I do this PlayStation podcast and, uh, you know, we're not used to doing two episodes every week. So this is a lot for us because we both work full-time jobs. But uh, I think you are right about that. Um but yeah, so this is uh, this is a short episode. It's 45 minutes, and before we go on any further, uh, the next episode coming out, episode 5, was actually going to be bumped in a little earlier. going to air it on Friday because of the Super Bowl is going to be on Sunday. So HBO is doing this thing where they're letting us listen to the episode on Friday or watch the episode on Friday. Now, I don't expect that Jake or I will have this podcast up at any other time than Monday night, like the regular scheduled program. So uh, just be tuned in, and we know the show's coming out early next week, and we will have a discussion about it, but it's just going to be the regular Monday night discussion that you guys are used to at this point. Jake, all good over there? Does this sound better? Much better. Okay. I don't know why I did that. That's weird. Thank you. I'm glad I caught that. All right. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so Jake's back. So this episode started off. We were hoping for Pittsburgh. We're Pennsylvanians. I was hoping to see Pittsburgh. Didn't fucking happen. I guess they do it in Kansas City, Missouri, I think, instead of Kansas City, Kansas. Is that right, Jake? Did you pick up on that? I mean, to be fair, Kansas City, Missouri, and Kansas City, Kansas are the same city. But I um, think they said Missouri, though. I don't know. I could so, be wrong. So here's the thing. I was a little bit irritated about this because, and maybe it's because they didn't really, so let me back up the, in the after episode kind of break, it's like sneak peek or behind the scenes or whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't know what they call it. Um, what's his name? Craig Mazin talks about how it originally took place in Pittsburgh, but because they were filming in Cal Calgary Kansas City seemed like a better fit. And I'm like, well, if you're not fucking recording in the city, one city kind of looks like another city when you're just in a bunch of buildings. Yeah. Why not just say it's fucking Pittsburgh? And the thing that – the other <laughs> thing is is that, like, like they, they homaged Pittsburgh by showing fucking Pittsburgh on their journey. When? They were driving on 79 across the bridges like over Neville Island and shit like that on the way to fucking uh, Kansas City. I didn't pick up on that. I didn't yeah, if you that. if you watch the sequence where they're in the truck and they're driving, yeah. some of those highway shots are like the stretch of like 79 that goes over the river, like near 
that area by Mount Washington and all that shit. It's probably all obviously and, CG'd and stuff, but... Yeah, and, and I'm sure that they did that as, like, an homage to the game, which is awesome. But it's, like... Originally, when they did it, I was like, oh, well, maybe they're going to play it off as, like... Well, it kind of makes a little bit more sense just for the, the pacing of the story for them to get a little bit farther mm. before they stop. Mm -hmm. You know, like... Pittsburgh is They've not very far. They've got 10 episodes or 9 episodes. Yeah. This, so. so Kansas City, Missouri gets them a little bit farther out west before they stop or whatever. But then they're just like, oh, no, it's just because it looks better. And I'm just like, okay, I guess. They couldn't get all but the like, rivers and bridges, apparently. And if they want to do Pittsburgh justice, because they've already gotten so much flack that the one episode was like, yeah, 10 miles outside of Boston or whatever. And these people were like, yeah, that's not fucking 10 miles outside of Boston. Trust us. It's not. You know, and it's like, okay, let's shit on these <laughs> this this awesome show because of the landscape doesn't quite match I think, the narrative. No, but, no, I think I think honestly they just need to people just need to fucking chill. Suspend your disbelief a little bit. It's yeah. just you know, people just wanna see like their hometown or whatever, which is I fine, do. I wanna see fucking But it's like but it's like in in my opinion, it doesn't I can really matter. I could suspend my disbelief and be like, "Oh, it's you know Kansas City or whatever." Like it doesn't matter to me if they if they want to change it to Kansas City, that's fine. But they just didn't give a good reason to me. Yeah. Like I don't understand why they did it. And right. If they if they were to literally come out and say like it would have been too difficult for us to get the landscape of Pittsburgh with where we were filming. Then that would have made sense, and maybe that's what they were implying, but it yeah. didn't really come across that way. But I didn't like. I don't ever. I haven't listened to any of like the official HBO podcast with Troy Baker where they go real, they yeah, dive deep and all that stuff. I haven't listened to any of that, so maybe they really, maybe they bust into it further. Um, and I guess this isn't really a topic worth dwelling on. Yeah, it, it would just would have been. It just would have been kind of cool to see that part of the because Pittsburgh is not a city that is utilized in multimedia very much. I mean, it's a very famous city in terms right. of its like ind industry and its sports and stuff but it's a small city so it doesn't really get used a lot in things like big tv and movie productions right so it, it would have been cool to see it you know like i think the last they did film the dark Knight, famous, right? well that's what i was gonna say the dark knight rises was filmed at heinz field yeah with the pittsburgh steelers at the time which was interesting right but that was like the last big thing that was really filmed in pittsburgh and someone will probably fucking correct us but like i'm sure shit was filmed there but like i don't know we can move on from the pittsburgh thing. yeah so before they get to kansas city though it's the show kind of starts off with ellie right and she has that stolen gun and she's kind of fucking with it and racking it and like looking at the bullets and like loading up the chamber and like you know just kind of playing with it and uh you know she steps outside and and joel's like siphoning gas at a gas station and she's like we got to do this every hour and he was like well yeah um, you know, gas after so long goes bad. So yeah, we got to do this. And, uh, she, she breaks into the joke book. So I don't know. The joke book comes out and I thought it was great. You know, she cracks some jokes and, uh, Joel's not having it. And, uh, he's kind of, you think that she's getting through to him and, and, uh, Bella Ramsey is Ellie cracking these jokes and just her, her approach is spot on. It really is when she's joking with him. It's a hundred percent spot on. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I I really enjoy. I mean, this first time, and it kind of fits with the story, right? It's her first time telling one of these jokes to Joel, but like as the episode gets on, like the delivery and the response gets better and better. Like especially like that last one is just fucking cracked me up. Yeah. Um. But like, yeah, I, I, I thought that this was really cool. I was a little bit weird about the whenever he was talking about um, how the gas last doesn't last as long because it turns to water or whatever. And I was thinking about that and I'm like, wouldn't like all of the engines and all of these cars be fucking broken if they were running water through them? Like, I don't understand how, like I, this is one of these things that like, I I'm really good at suspending my disbelief. So I don't really, this stuff doesn't bother me, but when they go out of their way to like explain it, yeah, then, then I'm like, and then I start thinking about it, and I'm like, how does any of this shit still work? Right. Like, all this gas and all these vehicles is just sludge, and if you're running water through your engine, it's not going to last very long. Right. 
you know, your car might last an hour period on the road, let alone yeah, the gas. There's a lot last of down cars, you fill though, it up. you know, so. Now, to be fair, I'm not a mechanic or an engine expert or anything. like. I know a little bit about engines and stuff from working on my motorcycle and everything. But, like, I don't know. It's just, like, one of these weird little things that I just, like, picked up on that yeah. didn't take me out of the story or anything. But it was just, like, I think it was just a talking point between the two of them. Yeah. That was kind of, it, it was kind of like a segue into the joke thing, which was pretty pretty cool and, I, and i'm glad that she brought it up they had the whole uh um i guess i don't know if you were getting the, the magazine and the driving and into stuff? like the, the yeah like the yeah magazine that's on the and everything which yeah was, which was cool like i just thought the whole they basically i don't know if you noticed but a lot of the dialogue mm. from the car stuff was ripped directly from one the game. to one like they didn't the game. they didn't change any of it yeah which was which is cool i mean it i personally wish they would change it mm -hmm. just a little bit like it doesn't have to be a lot like they can still keep the context and, and keep the the theme and keep the the main talking points of the conversation or whatever but for me it's like I've heard this before in another thing. You know yeah. what I mean? So like it it seems at that point it instantly turns into these people are acting something else that already exists. You know what I mean? And so I don't have any particular like it's not like I said, it's not like it ripped me out of the experience and I'm like, "Oh fuck, I wish they had changed it or anything like that." Yeah. But like um I think maybe it to put a little spin on it. It, it talks to the impact that the game had on me that i instantly recognize this dialogue whenever it's one for one from the game yeah same i had the exact same experience i was like wow you know that's and then she passes him the hank williams tape and she goes oh here's one uh you know and he he says something to the i can't repeat it but i knew it was line for one he says something like yeah a little before my time this one's a little more, but still a good one or something like that and they put on the hank williams yeah song. so good and that's that's what they cut to the montage that you're talking about the driving montage, and uh, if I'm being completely honest, they they do this big driving scene, and then I believe uh, they go camp out in the woods after this, uh, before they hit the city, and they go back, and and you can see Joel goes off the road, and I'm just thinking like. He thinks he's hiding, but from an aerial shot, you can see clearly that a vehicle was driven back into those woods. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, if any any raider came across there, or hunter rather, they they would be like, "Oh shit, this is exactly where they drove their vehicle." Um, but I really I think liked, probably banking on the fact that at night nobody would be able to see those. That like, is true. At night, you'd be able to tracks see that shit. in the grass, you know. Yeah, I I did. I really I really enjoyed that camping scene. Um, they're eating Chef Boyardee in the woods, and uh, she's like, wow, you know, what is this? And he's like, it's 20-year-old Chef Boyardee ravioli. And she goes, yeah, he was really good. <laughs> like, she's like, I had no idea what Chef Boyardee is. Yeah, he was really good at it. Like, it's so fun, really good cook. And uh, it's just wild. Like, I, you know, again, suspension of disbelief, I'm not sure that that shit would keep for 20 fucking years in a can. I wouldn't want to eat it. Um, even canned shit goes bad after a while. But that's that, that was hilarious. But... Uh, he starts talking about how, um, she can't light a fire because she doesn't, he doesn't want to be caught by humans. And then that kind of gets under Ellie's skin that night. She's a little nervous about it. And she has to double check with him. You know what you said about the humans, you know, are they going to, are we going to be, they're going to find us. And he's like, no, they're not going to find us. You know, dad, Joel kicks in and obviously he's fucking worried that they could be found. So he doesn't get any, a lick of sleep. And I loved that. Well, like she's just passed out and he's just standing guard, standing up. He can't rest. He's not, you know what I mean? He probably yeah. wants to sleep, but he can't. And she's like, that's what it would be like, man. Like you wouldn't have any peace, you know? That's why Bill's situation was so awesome. Because he had this whole fucking town and he had it all locked down. He slept in a bed and. Yeah, that whole dialogue sequence where she's talking about Chef Boy RD <laughs> and like, I just love the, the way that they're. Because we didn't get a lot of this in the game. Like, the way that they're writing Ellie in this and how she's being exposed to things that, like, we know of. Yeah. But she wouldn't know of because it's been gone for 20 years. Yeah. And so, like, 
like the Chef Boyardee thing is cool, and then like you said, I think there there is another moment where they're like laying down mm. and and she's like getting ready to fall asleep, and then she like tells Joel another joke. Yeah, and then I, uh, um, or wait, no, 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 that, that was at the I end. I think that's that late. That's end. later. Yeah, so when she lays down, she asks him if if they're gonna be okay. Right, that was what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Joel Joel was like getting ready to sleep, and then when she asks him that, his he like opens his eyes, and like you see him like looking at the gun, and then the next shot is him, like her sleeping, and him like standing Smash off with his back to, to her with yeah, the gun in the dark, just like watching the wood lines. Um, yeah, I uh, another instance though of her experiencing stuff for the first time happened the the previous episode before they make the Bills Town. They're in the woods. And Ellie says something like, I never thought that there'd be this many bugs in the woods. You know, like just shit like that. Like you just don't, yeah. you know, it's just an interesting, like, like you said, like she has been outside the quarantine. So her, her acknowledgement or experiencing being in the woods, like I didn't realize it, was, you know, I've I thought about the woods. I imagine what it would be like, but I had no idea there'd be this many bugs. <laughs> Yeah, it's wild. It is wild. Um, so yeah, so they get back on the road. They make it through the night, and uh, Joel's making fucking coffee. Now we know from the video game that he's a coffee lover, and Ellie knows that he loves coffee in the games, and uh, and uh, he has some sort of weird percolator or something going on under the campfire, and it's like spitting through the middle or something. I don't know what it is, but um, he's excited about his coffee, and uh, you know he found a way. Um, and she asked him about Starbucks or something. I don't. Is this is this the same as that shitty Starbucks stuff we had at the you know at quarantine or whatever quarantine? And he he said something like, "No, this is worse" or something. <laughs> I don't know. But no, she said she said something along the lines of, "Is this what all those Starbucks in the quarantine zones used to sell?" Okay, because there I guess you go. They don't exist anymore, right? right? right so right, like, so, yeah. and he was like. He's like, no, this is worse. It's whatever Bill has been able to save up for the last 20 years or whatever the hell it was. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, um, that's, that's much more accurate than how I said it. It's a, uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting to think about. Cause you know, I love a good cup of coffee in the morning and thinking about watching him make this coffee on the campfire and like drink it while they're on the road is like, you know, it, it like warms my heart a little bit because I know I would lo- like I would be Jones and for something like that too. Especially when you're up all night. And, yeah. and thinking about you know Ellie smells it and she's like, oh, it smells like burnt shit or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. And and um, so funny. I'm sure it does. If it's 20 year old fucking stale coffee, it probably smells and tastes ter- terrible. But yeah, uh, a guy's got it. He's got his Jones and on for some coffee. Yeah. So they make it. What they make it to Kansas City, and then uh, there's all kinds of traffic blocked off. Joel recognizes that like they're not getting through under this bridge. They got it all segmented off. And then, um, he says, "Well, it's fine. We'll we'll just back up and we'll we'll go up the uh, off ramp or whatever, and we'll we'll cut through the city. You know, not a problem. We'll get around it." And uh, you could tell he's a little nervous driving through the city, right? He's kind of looking around and, like, he's, like, oh, you know, being super apprehensive. And uh, even when he stopped at the bridge, he, he grabbed his gun and told her to wait, you know. Um, but now they're they're cruising through the city and they're they're trying to make their way around. And, and Ellie's like, wait, stop, you know. And she – and Jewel stops and they look over and there's a guy there, right? Is that where they see the guy and, and he says something? After they get off the highway yeah. and she can't, she can't figure out how, with the map how to get back to the. I love how he starts getting angry with her, and she's she's like, "This is the seventh t- second time I've ever been in a fucking car." Yeah, right. And she's like trying to read the map or whatever. Um, yeah, and then almost like a, a, you know, that scene from the game where that guy walks out in front of the vehicle and is like, help me, help me. And, yeah. and Joel's like, you know, we're not going to help him or whatever. Put on your seatbelt. The yeah. dialogue is a little bit different in that. Cause I think in the game, he says something along the lines of like, you know, he's not in trouble or something like that. And then like yeah. in, and he don't need our help show. Yeah. She's like, are we going to help him? And he's like, no. And like, it looks like he's going to drive right over. And he him. goes strap in. And, yeah, uh, right. and then, you know, obviously, they fuck. They throw a brick at the window, and he drives through the car into the store and in the laundromat, and it, and it's, you know, pretty. That scene was a little bit different. The whole this whole scene in the laundromat was a little bit different from the game, but 
uh, it was still pretty violent. I mean, that scene was very violent in the game. Yeah. And it's even more violent in the TV show in that Ellie uses a gun. Do you remember in the game if she saves Joel in the game too? I don't remember she, on this part. She doesn't. So my memory of this is one of the most – I have one of the the best memories – from playing the game in this part of the game. So it's in Pittsburgh. You fall for the trap. You don't fall for the trap. You still get jacked up and you essentially wreck. And then you're like, get out of the car, get out of the car, you know, and then you get out. And uh, what happens is, is somebody is like punching Ellie or like attacking Ellie. Like one of the bad guys are like attacking her. And, oh, they're like yanking her out of the truck. Yeah. yeah I, I feel like I remember that. And then you yeah. as the character get to bum rush the guy and just fucking lay him out with a, with a haymaker. And playing the game and being Jewel in that moment felt so protective and so badass. I'm surprised that they didn't allow Ellie to take a few, few hits from a bad guy in this and have just fucking Joel lose his mind. Because that's how I felt it transpired in the game. Because his... his overprotecting in this in the movie or the tv show they just lay behind cover and he's like you can make it to the hole they're not going to hit you they're not going to hit you you can crawl through that don't worry about it don't come out until i tell you it's safe much different than the game honestly and i think the way the game was scripted was actually better than this um this is the one of the few parts of this series so far that i disagree with how they handled it um, it was still fine and serviceable. Don't get me wrong. They still accomplished everything. But in the game, Ellie has not yet shot and killed anybody. And she doesn't for a while in the game. So they... Till the end, like towards the end of the Pittsburgh segment. Yeah. I I wonder if they just did this to sort of Every move time. up Sorry. that... Just to, to push just the move timeline. Up that part of the... Um, the timeline where, you know, Ellie exposes the fact that she has a gun. Because in that part... Where she's hiding, like on the other side of the wall or whatever, she pulls out her switchblade, yeah. and I thought, like, oh, she's gonna attack him with the switchblade, and the knife's gonna or the gun's gonna stay secret for a while, but she decides to pull the gun out and just instead of killing the guy, just like paralyzes him, like shoots him in the back or right. something. Well, he's choking and Joel. He falls out, off right? of Joel. So in the in yeah. the game, a similar thing happens, um, but not in this scene. In the game, the way it works is Joel is getting drowned by some dude. Um, in the water, like they're, they're in an, they're like on some sort of complex, he wipes out or falls or something happens and he's getting choked out and, uh, he's going to die. And Ellie ends up killing and shooting this guy to save him. And in the, in the series, it happens much earlier and it happens at this very first interaction with the Raiders or hunters or whatever. And, um, you're right, Jake. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is the point where Ellie and, and she didn't kill the guy, though. In the game, she definitely killed the guy. So they left it a little open in the series where Joel ends up saying, well, you know, you didn't technically kill him. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but we can talk about that whole scene because that whole scene was crazy. Um, so yeah, I love how, like, it... the The combat itself was kind of like whatever you know it's just kind of like an action scene but yeah. the whole scene where joel's getting choked and ellie shoots the guy is really wild because joel's not paying attention he's looking for ellie and this guy busts through behind him and they scuffle and then he ends up getting on top of him and he's like choking him out and ellie saves him and i love the part where like, this is, like, one of those sequences that just reminds you how brutal this world is and how Joel is ha is just so fucked up by it where he just tells Ellie, like, get back behind the wall. Yeah. And... I don't want you to and see basically what makes to her, makes her to leave, and then you just hear him fucking kill this guy. And like, he, doesn't he doesn't even she doesn't even waste the bullet on him. He stabs yeah, him he in doesn't the heart. Yeah, he waste the bullet on him. He just fucking kills him. Stabs him in the heart because the when melee. they lay his, yeah they lay his body out, he's got a stab wound right through the right through the chest. And uh, the 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 part that re yeah that whole thing resonated with me. And and just the 
how how messed up this world is. You're right, Jake, because this kid is literally like, hey, you know, all right, I made a mistake. You know, we can trade. And he even says, like, I don't know what to do. My legs aren't working. Like, I, I don't know. Like, he's thinking out loud. Like, I don't know how to, I don't know what to do here. Like, he's, you know, he's like, I'm sorry. You know, I'll trade with you. You know, you're, you're good guys. We didn't realize it. You know, you're good guys. You're like us. And just begging and pleading for his life for a little longer than I was actually kind of comfortable with. And I like that about it. And then, you know, at the end, he starts saying, where's my mom? And then he starts yelling for his mother when Ellie's behind the wall. And you're just like, fuck, man. Like, that is depressing and sad as shit. Like, you know, when, when a grown man or a kid is crying out for their mom because they know they're about to get yeah. murdered. That's just like, dude. And that's what it was. It was a murdering. But, I mean, like, again, he would have done the same to Joel if Ellie weren't there. So this is just that brutal world, man. There, this is not a feel-good show. Um despite uh, how good it is, you know, just like the last of us game is not a feel good game. It, it's peppered with funny moments and cute things from time to time and interesting characters for sure, but it's never feel good or happy. So knowing that yeah. they did a great job with that scene and it's just a, a reminder. I'm, I'm just surprised that like Cormac McCarthy didn't write this TV show. Like this is just like so brutal and violent and fucked up. Um, it's wild. Yeah. So anyways, um, that was that moment, right? So then um, it cuts to like there's a, there's a squad getting put together, and there's this new ringleader, and, and she's kind of ruthless, and her name's Catherine, I think, and I don't know who this is. I This person's not in the game, I don't think. Yeah. And uh, she's forming a group together, and she's actually forming – She it starts off with her looking for Henry. She's trying to find Henry. Henry did them wrong or sold somebody out, and she's asking this doctor guy, "Hey, where's Henry?" And he's like, "Listen, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, uh, I brought you into this world. I'm guessing he was he was the doctor, and uh, when her mom was in labor, he helped with that. And he's just like, "Listen, you know, why, why you? she's, you know, she holds a gun to his head and she says, "Where's Henry? I know you know where he's at. You got to tell me." And he doesn't want to like anyone else hurt or killed or whatever. So he's kind of begging for his life. And then she leaves, and then they bring the bodies of the people that Joel wrecked, and she sees them, and she's like, Henry did this. This is all because of Henry. He called in backup. So then she storms back to the doctor, and she just kills him. And it's like, okay, well, she apparently really wants to kill Henry. So, Yeah, I am kind of curious as to what – because we don't really know what Henry did to upset this woman. Yeah. So, because we know we know who Henry and Sam are from the game. Yeah, they didn't join their squad, or maybe they did and left. Right. I don't know. So I don't know. I mean, because in the game, we don't. There's no. There's no Catherine character. Right. There's no. There's no humanity to the hunters that you're fighting at all. And all we know is that Henry in, and Sam are trying to get out of the city. Yeah. So. It's pretty interesting that this – and they say in the little thing after the show that, that they – like Neil Druckmann said he wanted to try and humanize the bad guys. And that's the whole plot of the second game pretty mm. much. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he did it with this game by adding this character, Catherine, who doesn't land super well for me. Me either. Um I think she's just too – she's not fearsome enough. Does that make any sense? Yeah, the dude running like, with it, her is way more tough looking and scary looking. The guy at the like line Like I have main. a hard time – like unless maybe they're going to show something wild in the next episode, I have a hard time believing that all of these people – Are following her. Are following her in this brutal world. Like you would imagine there'd be some – some like tribalistic freaking you know most violent most outspoken guy is the guy you know what i mean and i'm not saying that that like it has to be this caveman brain brain thing but like nothing about this person really screams uh dictator or ruler yeah violent leader or something like that right and the, like the thing, it's it's almost like the things that she says, and I guess to a lesser extent, or to a similar extent, the thing that she does by killing that doctor, they're almost contradictory to sort of her her aesthetic. 
if that makes any sense. And I'm not saying that's a bad design choice. There, there's definitely a place where I imagine in a world like this, even the most soft-spoken people probably can have the most violent and psychotic tendencies. Mm-hmm. But, like, I think it just subverts your expectation of, or at least my expectation of that character a little bit too much. Do you know what I mean? And I'm hoping that, like, it kind of comes together in the next episode. Maybe we'll learn a little bit more. Maybe it'll get a little bit deeper. Why are these fucking people following this woman? I have no idea. You know what I mean? Maybe you find out that she had some big role to play, that maybe she somehow organized the the um, the overthrowing of the QZ or whatever. Because right, like it's, it's completely and all dismantled that. in Kansas City right now. So there is no there's no law or order at all. And she's running this faction, apparently, and they're, you know, they're doing their own thing. And, yeah, it was just kind of interesting to me, um, you know. So while while they're uh, showing this, this lady say, we're going to go on a hunting party for Henry, they cut to Joel and Ellie, and uh, they're trying to get some vantage point through this these stairs. They're climbing these stairs. And... Uh, as they're climbing, well, there was the whole there was the whole part in the storefront first. Was there what happened there? I don't remember. That was where he shows her how to use the gun. Oh, uh, he kind of gives her permission. It says how to hold it and stuff. Yeah, right. Well, that I mean that part I feel like because that's the part right after the the store, kind of like between or like after. So there was the store part, and then there was the part with the Catherine lady, and then there was the part in the storefront mm-hmm. where. You can tell that Joel is really uncomfortable about what happened in the store. And you can tell that Ellie is really uncomfortable, but she doesn't want to look like she's weak or something. And so Joel has a really hard time, and there's like this moment between them where Joel has a really hard time kind of saying that he's sorry and that she shouldn't have to... Have to do he that. Have, have to, to kill experience people. stuff like yeah. that. He doesn't apologize for killing that guy. He apologizes that she had to do violence against him. Right. And that it's his fault that she had to do violence and she shouldn't have to do violence. Right, right. And, you know, there's like a moment where she's, they're both upset and she's crying and, and they kind of like come to sort of some kind of an agreement, like a, a, some kind of a, 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 like an inaudible agreement. Well, does it spoken between the two of them? Yeah. And then he just he gives like because he takes the gun from her after she shoots that guy. Doesn't she tell then he, him then that uh, that wasn't the first time for me? It wasn't the first time. Yeah, he was like they were talking about she's saying he's saying he's sorry, he's saying he's sorry. And then there was a moment of silence. And then she's like, yeah, uh, this wasn't the first time. And then uh, he gives that's when he gives her the gun and he holds it, she holds it, and he's like, where'd you learn to do that? And she's like, Fedra, and he's like, figures. Like yeah. it, like they were teaching her wrong. And he shows her like the proper way to hold it and, and everything. And that that sequence doesn't come until later in the game. Like towards the end of Pittsburgh where he's showing her how to use the rifle. Yeah, she, she and, uses a rifle to protect him. Right. And I still thought this scene was really cool in that they kind of, like I said, come to like this unspoken agreement where he's like, okay, you've passed some test in my book. Now you're a lot, you can have this gun. You're, you deserve it. But don't, don't and put then, it in your pocket or whatever. Like keep it in the backpack. Cause you'll shoot your ass off is what he says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you'll shoot your ass. Yeah. Off. And, then, and then like in like a little moment of defiance, she sticks it in her coat pocket as opposed yeah. to like putting it in her belt buckle or whatever, right. her belt. But, uh, yeah, and then the scene after that is where they, like, go up the stairs to the apartment or whatever. Yeah. Like, the, the end of the episode, really. Yeah, and then she's she's essentially just saying, you know, how did you know that was an ambush? And he's like, well, I've been on both sides of it. And that's that's straight from the game, that, that conversation, not where it takes place or when it takes place. But that that's, you know, and he indicates that he, and, he, he went along with Tommy when Tommy joined the Fireflies so Tommy wouldn't get himself killed. He said he went along with him just to protect them. And then they got into that mess and, uh, he said it worked for what it was, you know, and then Tommy left to join the fireflies. So, and I think that's when they went separate ways, which is interesting. Yeah. It's really, 
Really weird. You get a little bit of insight there. I mean, I'm sure we'll learn more about Tommy later. Did you notice that, um, I don't know if you watched the thing after the credits, the uh, the burly military guy yeah. is the voice actor for Tommy in the game. Yeah, so the, the really... Which is pretty cool. Yeah, the, online, all the, all the ladies are saying that dude was a hunk and he, he was so attractive and what a stud. Um, the uh, Catherine's right hand man, right with the big beard and the long, long, perfect like hair, and you know, uh, just he's definitely Butch, that's for sure. I mean, yeah, he's definitely a dude's dude, and apparently a woman's dude. But he, uh, he is the voice actor for Tommy in the games. And when he first talked, I was like, that sounds an awful like Tommy. I, I didn't know it was him. And uh, man, I mean, I don't know. Would he have made a better Tommy <laughs> than who we get? I don't know. He's pretty cool looking. But I think it kind of makes sense that they made they they picked a different Tommy or whatever. Well, yeah, they're brothers, and we already um, talked about the ethnicity and stuff. Yeah, making it work canonically with within the show. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I I think that it's it's cool like it seems like this is a thing right they're 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 finding a way to get the original actors from the game in the show in some capacity yeah now i know because you know the internet already knows things that uh troy baker and ashley johnson are going to show up at some point we don't really know when or where you know assume maybe they're going to be like part of Tommy's crew or like a fireflies or something like that towards the end of the game watch troy knows, baker maybe- be the doctor or something uh, well, I was thinking, wouldn't it be hilarious if like Joel kills Troy Baker's like cameo That'd character awesome. and it, it, like, it would just takes him out? No spoilers, but he kinda, just takes him out. Kind of funny, yeah. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I, I thought that was kind of cool. And then, um, you know, obviously the last scene is them going to sleep after they climb up the stairs and and joel spreads all this glass out yeah and uh he's like she's like ellie's like why are you doing that and he's like oh it's so i'll hear something dude it's also a nod to the game there because there's glass that you step on that'll alert clickers and stuff yeah and it's uh and obviously it doesn't end up working but um i just like that scene that last scene of them like getting ready to fall asleep and and joel's like you know, do you want to talk about the time that you, like, what happened when you killed someone or whatever? Yeah, shot you said this wasn't the first time. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Yeah, and she's like, I don't want to talk about it, and he's like, Okay, you don't have to talk about it. And then that's when they're getting ready to fall asleep, and she tells the she's like, Joe, got a got a serious, serious question for you. Got a serious question for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's just trying to sleep. That was funny, and I I love that like that he laughs like they, they both laugh. They have a laughing and it's moment. Like you can tell that there, there's like, there's something, there's something definitely developing between the two of them. Cause at the beginning of this episode, he just basically calls her cargo to her face. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, obviously it seems like they're coming a long way together Yeah, and maybe they're, they're coming together the relationship is coming together a little quicker, I think, than it does in the game. Oh, for sure. They got. Um, I feel like it's feeling a little bit rushed right now, but it's it's fine. We're not even halfway through. Well, there's only I nine episodes, I think. Yeah, I guess technically after the next episode, we will be slightly more than halfway through the season. So, and I'm curious, just thinking about what's left in the game, I have to imagine the next episode is going to be the last episode in Pittsburgh. Well, Sorry, Kansas City or whatever. Yeah, they're gonna or, resolve with Henry that and somehow. Sam and yeah. all that stuff, because we still got, you know, we still got the Colorado stuff with David and all that. We still have got, you know, the whole the big thing with Tom. Well, we've got the whole stuff with Tommy. We've got the whole thing with, uh, and then the whole hospital thing, obviously. Yeah. So in Seattle, so I'm, yeah. I'm curious how they're going to get through all of that. In five they might episodes. combine some of it together. You know what I mean? But in five episodes, there's a lot of shit to do still. So you would have to imagine that they're gonna they're gonna wrap up this storyline in you know next from episode. the game, the Pittsburgh sequence in the next episode, and they'll be on their way to meeting up with uh, 
with Tommy, I guess, is the next part. That's where they're trying to go, so, I think. They're trying to find him. So trying to yeah, get her so, to the Fireflies. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what we'll see what happens. I, I did like that uh, when they wake up, you know, it, she sounds just like Ellie when he's sleeping. And she's like, Joel! You know, and then he like he's not waking up, and then she's like, "Joel," <laughs> and then it cuts to you know she's got a gun to her head, and then he wakes up, and then it, apparently like Sam is holding a gun to Joel's head, and then he's just like, "Shh." So, dude, I I know I know that we haven't we haven't really experienced their characters yet, but the actors that they got for Henry and Sam are fucking spot on. There's, there's, they just, their look is so good. Yeah. And I'm really excited to see like how those characters develop, actually act because that, that whole sequence with Henry and Sam is one of the most depressing parts of the entire fucking game. Yeah. So I'm really anxious to see how th- they play it out in this show. Do you, th- do you think that they're going to be around for more than just next episode? Do you think they're going to let them? go into episode six I, or are they going to tell that whole I, story next episode just based on how they've been writing the show so far if i had to place a wager my guess is that it's one episode I, my guess is that sam and henry are gonna end up going out in a blaze of glory with fucking elizabeth or whatever the hell her name is interesting um at the end of the next episode. Well, we'll see like if you're that, right. Like, I think they stick closer to the game. Without, I hope they without do. Without spoiling it. Yeah, because... Because that, that sequence is heart-wrenching. And I... I don't know, man. At, watching this... This episode flew by. It was 45 minutes. And, That's it. And I, I enjoyed it, but... Dude, that... La- the, episode 3 was so good... Mm. That like this episode almost for like I would say this episode was still a nine out of ten, mm-hmm. but it still it felt almost like more of a throwaway episode compared to the last one. And it had the really cool you know what scene, I mean? yeah, the really cool uh, ambush scene where it was like they had a. Th- this episode seems more like a transitory episode. Like, this episode and the next episode probably could have been one episode, but it was a little too long to make one episode, so they made it two episodes. Yeah, because this is 45. It's not, like, 55 or pushing an hour. Um, Do you think the first two episodes were, like, 57 minutes, 58 minutes, and then the third one was... The first episode... Oh, right. The first first episode was an hour and 20 minutes, and the last episode, episode three, was an hour and 10 minutes. And episode two was, like, about an hour, 53. Was about an hour. Three. Yeah, a this has less. been the shortest episode for sure so far. Yeah, yeah. All so right. I, I'm curious what's going to happen. You know, they're they're. You know, I don't have a problem with them playing with the episode length or whatever. Tell it how you got to tell it, and you're not going to. You know, I'd rather you just do what you're going to do. What do you What do you um, think about um, Catherine finding Sam in Henry's hidey hole and all the drawings of them like superheroes, and then when they when they pull the guns on. Uh, Joe and Ellie, they they clearly have, you know, Sam has his face painted like a superhero, like in the in the artwork. Did they do that just so that the viewers unfamiliar with the story know that this is who Catherine's searching for at the end? I would assume so because people that haven't played the game don't know that that's Henry and Sam. Right. So if it's just random random guy pointing a gun at you that looks like they could be part of Catherine's group. Right. So. I'm assuming that when it first happens, you're meant to sort of, as a non-familiar, maybe sort of react as like, oh, they got caught by Catherine. And then then when they show Henry, and then it shows Sam and he's got his face painted, maybe it's like, oh, this this little boy must have been the one that was, so that must be Henry. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Um, And they've got guns pointed on him, so it kind of feeds into the narrative that Henry's a bad guy somehow. Right. And maybe I'm, he is. Maybe maybe he is. Maybe, maybe he did some fucked up shit, shit dude. He might have really done some fucked up shit, but been cool with Joel and Ellie in the game. You know what I mean? Like you don't know why Henry and Sam are on the run. He's know they're after him. Yeah. So maybe he's a bad guy. So I hope he is, man. I hope they flip the I, script and like Henry and Sam are actually bad. Do you know? Did you notice this? We kind of 
glanced over this, but that whole sequence after they find the attic sequence where they go down into oh, that basement area about the and tendrils they something. open that door and there's like a like a pit, like almost like concrete was collapsing into the floor and it starts like writhing as they're like looking at it. Yeah. You have to imagine this is where they're going to introduce the bloaters because we didn't get that in Bill's Town, which is where you get it in the game. Um, bloaters and are like really they, they very clearly in the preview show, people. like in the preview for episode five, they show one of the bloaters. Mm. So I'm guessing that this is kind of how things are going to play out with that. But I don't know, man. But I, I again, I have I have no real complaints about what I'm watching. I my my honestly, my biggest complaint is that I fucking hate waiting a week between episodes. Yeah. Well, you, you like sucks. we said at the beginning of the show, dude. Friday, watch it Friday. You don't have to wait a week. Yeah, I mean, this week is special, but just only because of the Super Bowl. Now, but the thing is, is that between this coming episode and the next episode, we got to wait two extra days. Yeah, that's true. So it's not like we're gaining much. It's like a record. But, uh, you got to flip it over, reset the needle. Yeah. I get it, but it's, I don't know. Yeah. It just seems like one of those things where... The, the times they are a change in and I there's like something to be said about having to wait a week to to see the next episode or whatever but to me it's like maybe make me wait like a day well I think dude, or two I, days I hear something. you but I think it I think it has totally served this show because it gives everyone a week to tweet and talk and write and, and do YouTube Well, that's the whole point, right? right? So then everyone's like, oh, shit, we better get on this and watch this shit, right? And then the, the hype train they can they moving. Yeah, I mean, they can keep The Last of Us in the zeitgeist for at least nine weeks plus By the fallout, right? right? So, you know, you're talking about a good few months of not to mention all of the accolades you have to imagine the show is going to get. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's marketing wise. It's a, it's a, it's a good strategy. I just wish from a consumer's perspective, I just want to watch the whole thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to wait. I hear you. I get what you're but saying. But it does kind of, it does cause a little bit of a buildup, you know? You're like ready once you, like you're excited when you get to see the next episode. Yeah. So that's kind of cool too, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we this wait. This making me wait till fucking nine p.m. though is bullshit. <laughs> Just launch the shit on midnight and let me watch it whenever I want on Sunday. Just saying. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't have an issue with any of that. I it gives me something to look forward to. I guess you know. I don't know. Right before I have to go back to work on Monday, so it's kind of nice. One last fun thing to do before I hit the hay. But all right. Speaking of hitting the hay, Jake, I think it's time to wrap this up. Um, any last comments or anything? I, I think we both are still in agreement that it was another good episode. Um, you know, I think the one the one fight scene with the ambush, I really wish Ellie would have taken a few licks and Joel could have went running to her her save, uh, her to be her savior, I guess. But they didn't do it that way. It would have felt really nice to watch that happen, but it didn't didn't go that way. But all in all, I think it was good. I think I think we're getting a glimpse into the faction there in Pittsburgh slash Kansas City, whatever you hell you want to call it, it's Kansas City. And uh, I'm curious to see what Henry and Sam's backstory is. I think we're gonna get some of that next episode. So, you good? You got any comments? Nope. I I actually I think it would be kind of a neat exercise at the end. To try and like rank all the episodes, cause like, it, just in it, not in like an official capacity, just be like, you know, these are the ones I liked the most, you know, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Maybe do like a a post mortem or something, cause yeah, thinking back on it, it's like, you know, I don't know. I mean, the the show, I I get, I'm like one of those people that I get more excited as the show goes on. I don't know if they're going to be able to do anything to compete with the episode three, but I think that the show will just get, just keep getting better and keep holding my attention for sure. Yeah. It's picking up steam. You know, it's, it's, it's a snowball rolling down the hill, man. It's just getting bigger and bigger and getting more interesting. And we know where the story's going to go. 
And we have some good ideas of what's coming up. So I'm just excited to see how they tackle it, man. I think it's really cool. So, all right. Well, with that out of the way, thanks for tuning in to PS. This is the last of us. Again, my name is Fred Oakman. That's Jake Peters. We also host a PlayStation podcast. And new episodes air every Monday on your preferred streaming platform. But for this show, it is a YouTube exclusive. So make sure you subscribe. And uh, come back next Monday. And we'll be talking about episode 5 next time you jump in. And uh, like I said, that that episode comes out early on Friday. We're going to be discussing it and uploading our conversation on Monday. Just to stay consistent for everybody. So, all right. Thanks so much, guys. Until then, like the last of us, P.S. Yes. This is awesome. This is awesome. <laughs>